We'll be going into a fireside chat. And um, please, I want you to help me bring up the stage um, the manager of the Affirmative Finance Action for Women in Africa, Afawa, at the African Development Bank, Mariam Desanu. Please put your hands together for her. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. First of all, um, I really want to appreciate the African Development Bank for sending you to this event. Thank you. Thank our you. regards to our very own, the president. Um, additional, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but we're here for a very interesting conversation. And this is a conversation that I have been looking forward to sincerely. Um, so please, can you just let us know in brief what the what Afawa? What what is Afawa? First of all, I know it's supposed to bridge a forty-two billion dollar funding gap for African women. So what is it? So first and foremost, thank you so very much for the opportunity to be here. And on behalf of the African Development Bank, we reiterate our engagement to supporting women entrepreneurs on, on the continent to scale up and grow. And to scale up and grow, why? Because there is no development of Africa if 50% of our population is actually not being leveraged. Let's just say it. If 50% who are women are not being accounted for, are not provided access, then the continent cannot develop. As President Adeshina actually likes to say, a bird or a plane cannot fly with one wing. So Africa cannot develop if women entrepreneurs are not fully part of the game. And so AFAWA, therefore, which stands for the Affirmative Finance Action for Women Entrepreneurs in Africa, is a pan-African initiative that the African Development Bank has developed to close the $42 billion gap that exists for women entrepreneurs. And by the way, let me make sure that we understand who we're talking about. Women-owned SMEs who are formal have a $42 billion gap on the continent. They need access to finance to scale up and they're finding it challenging. So in order for that gap to be bridged and closed, the African Development Bank created a FAWA. Our aim is that in the next five to six years, we will have facilitated up to 5 billion, not 500 million, as you said earlier, but $5 billion worth of financing for women entrepreneurs on the continent. Thank you very much. Um, we would come back to the money. Let's just lay a foundation. <laughs> if you're interested in the money, can I see your hands? <laughs> ah, your excellencies are raising their hands too. <laughs> There's a problem. <laughs> All right, okay. Now, Af Afawa has three focal areas. Can you just break down those areas to us? Absolutely. So. Our three pillars are first, access to finance. So what do we need to do for women entrepreneurs to be able to access the cash, the money? We work with financial institutions, and I repeat, financial institutions. I will come back to that in a second, you will understand why. And put to their, if you will, at their disposals, financial mechanisms that are customized to the need of the women-owned SMEs that I talked about. So these are investments. So the bank, the African Development Bank, invests into financial institutions so that they can support women entrepreneurs. These are like lines of credit. So we put cash and the financial institution can use that cash to lend it to women entrepreneurs, and of course, repay us, by the way, because we're a bank. Um, these are trade finance, so all the women who are involved in import, export, there are lines that are there to facilitate your ability to bring in goods or send them out. 
And these are like equity funds. So they are investment funds that are put in place. And those investment funds come to you and they take equity in your business, meaning they take a stake ownership in your business in order to enable you to grow. So that's one mechanism. The second is a guarantee mechanism. So we've come to, un we've come to understand, we know and understand that one of the reasons why women entrepreneurs have difficulties in accessing financing, one of, is the lack of collateral, the lack of guarantees because in most places, women do not inherit land. Women have a hard time owning property. However, this is the type of collateral that most financial institutions will want and will take, especially as you're growing and requiring more funds. So if 50% of the population doesn't have land, then of course you've set them aside. So today we've created a mechanism that enables financial institutions basically to lend to you with facilitated collateral requirements or lesser, uh, if you will, collateral requirements that are less than what they used to be in order for you to be able to, to access. So that's the pillar one financial mechanism. The second pillar is access to skills. And here the skills is at two level. It's at the level of the women entrepreneurs who very often, we have to say, don't understand the financial system, the financial world. As a matter of fact, I almost want to say we're scared of it. We've heard so many things and so we don't go to the bank. So it's important for us to enhance our skills, to understand what financial institutions are looking for when it's time to invest so that we have the capacity to present the right paperwork, to sell ourselves in the right manner, to sell our businesses in the right manner, in order for them to see the advantage, the benefit, and the lesser risk in investing in us. So that's one. On the second hand, it's important also to work with financial institutions to get them to understand the differences between a man-owned and a woman-owned business, because there are differences and to take those differences and ensure that they are taking them into account into their risk assessment and their mitigating um, measures as well because what that means is that financial institutions will start creating products that fit better to the need of women business uh, women businesses or women entrepreneurs and then finally the third pillar and it was so interesting to hear the, the, the policy, the politics, and so on and so forth right before the session, is basically at the regulatory level, or what we refer to as the enabling environment. What kind of environment are we setting up in order for financial institutions to accompany women entrepreneurs and in order for women entrepreneurs to rise, right? So a very... Um, a very simple example that I use every time I speak again is the issue of collateral. We will go to financial institutions and we will say they do not lend to us. They're asking us for collateral that we don't have. We don't have property. We don't have this. We don't have that. Banks don't want us. That's what we're saying. Well, actually, banks are regulated. Somebody had to make the rules. Who made the rules? Who decided that actually if you're going to lend to someone, the type of guarantee that you have to take is land, it's property. If you don't have it, or if the person does not have it, then you don't lend. If you lend as a financial institution, it's at your own demise because if the person doesn't pay, it's up to you. We will not cover you. So in order to provide an opportunity for women, we have to make sure that the regulations, that the policies that are in place are conducive to women being able to access and are also conducive to financial institutions being able to do their work. Because at the end of the day, just like women entrepreneurs are in the business of making money, financial institutions are in the business of making money. So everybody has to find basically that win-win situation 
in order for it to work. And if the regulatory environment is not conducive to that, then it's a problem. Um, in addition to that, we need to make sure that all the other ecosystem players that are there to support have the capacity to support. Women business associations have a huge role to play. They have the capacity to train. They have the capacity to reach out to the financial institutions and explain, and even accompany in some cases in a profitable manner, because it's a commercial, uh, if you will, endeavor. They have the capacity to advocate. Very often, they don't play that role. Right? So it's really important to enhance the ability of the ecosystem players to be able to do that. And then finally, on that third pillar, is raising the status of women. Whenever I walk into a financial institution and I say, why aren't you lending to women entrepreneurs? The first thing they, tell, they say to me is, well, they're not our client. And I'm like, well, why aren't they your client? They're in the informal sector. They're in the micro sector. Esther, this is not what we do here. So what that means is that as much as women entrepreneurs are the drivers of our economies, they're the, Africa has the highest percentage of uh, female self-employed, of entrepreneurs. We start businesses at a faster pace than anywhere else in the world. However, we're in the informal sector. Can't work. We can scream access to finance all we want. If women entrepreneurs remain in the informal sector, we will not close this gap because all the financial products, the financial instruments, it's funny how the money is there. I mean, everywhere you go, I come, I say 5 billion, the World Bank will come and say some other amount and so on and so forth. The money is there, but women are not accessing it. And I think we have to ask ourselves the right questions, right? So those are the three pillars that we work on throughout. So in every country where we are, uh, we try as much as possible to have all those three pillars be activated because when we come back and we show our results, we want to show how by working in a very holistic manner, we've basically moved the needle. Well, thank you very much. Please a round of applause for her. So uh, I'm gradually getting into the place, I'll start asking very tough questions. Um, so far, 2021, how much was this bust, please? Okay, so let me caveat that, because depending on how long you've been hearing about a FAWA, right, uh, it might be a lot or it might be very little. So a FAWA was announced in 2016, thereabout. However, it was at the time a huge vision that our leaders had. Now we needed to galvanize everyone behind that vision, including the people who invest also in the African Development Bank. So AFAWA really comes to life, if I can say, in 2020 with the approval of our first guarantee mechanism. Um, and in 2021, we truly unleash. So in a year, we've done $500 million worth of approved, um, if you will, transactions. So today in about 22, 23 countries on the continent, AFAWA is actually present. As women entrepreneurs, you will not particularly know or notice because our entry point is actually who? Your financial institution. So. If you haven't gone to the financial institution, then you have not accessed. Most financial institutions who are interested in the women's market will put a program in place. That program will enable you to be accompanied, so supported throughout. It's an opportunity for you to ask all the questions about your business to your banker, who actually should be your number one partner. Because not only does he hold the money, but he has an understanding of the in and out for you to be able to grow from level one to level two. That's one. Second, in that same banker, you have someone who's a relationship officer. Why? Because this business that you're looking for in corporates are actually corporates that are where? Banking with that same bank. 
So if you don't have a relationship with your banker, you're missing out because he has the capacity and the ability to link you up. You see? So the African Development Bank is a wholesale bank. That's kind of how we have to explain it. So as a wholesale bank, we retail or we sell out to financial institutions who then sell out to you. All right. Thank you. I was taking you somewhere. So in last year, you guys did about $500 million. Okay. So I want to ask the audience now, if you're here, you're an African woman, you're in the formal sector, and you're an entrepreneur, and you got a part of the 500 million. Can I see your hand, please? I said you run a registered business, a, co a proper business, not a small, by the way, a carouseller. All right, I, 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 no, now we, we can see this. Nobody here. But again, notice I said something. What's that? They would not know whether it's a FAWA that they have accessed or not accessed. Why? Because I support the financial institution who lends to them. So the question actually should be, right? Who's your bank? And as an entrepreneur, a formal one at that, did you actually benefit from credit? or not did you benefit from a program or not right you wouldn't know unless i told you for example that um we're talking about nigeria that fcmb first city monumental bank right is an entity that is supported by afawa you wouldn't know that unless i told you right same in Cote d'Ivoire today, actually just this week, I was with a financial institution called Finel, meaning finance for her, who has deployed over $1.6 million in less than three months to women entrepreneurs, collateral free, by the way. But none of these women entrepreneurs would know that Finel is able to do that because the FAWA is behind. There's a system in place, right? And every actor within that system is support is, in, is coming to support in order for you to scale up. The most important thing, actually, is not for you to know that Afawa has supported. It's for you to know that you can walk into a financial institution that has decided that because it sees the value that as women entrepreneurs you bring, they want to support you. Because they see the women entrepreneurship market as being a profitable one, as being an important one, by the way, for their business, because if you're not profitable, they're not interested, and we will tell them not to go. As I said, we are investing. So we're an investor, we expect returns, right? So in order for it to work, you have to also be something, someone or an entity of market that is profitable to them. Yeah? So this financial institution has put a program in place for you to actually participate into, access into, in order for you to get and the credit and the knowledge and skills and the long-term support that you need. Okay, Mariam, I'm coming to this point because I'm coming from a country and understand the, the, the very difficult terrain it is for women to access funding. And um, I think if Afawa is giving some banks or financial institutions funds to be accessed by women, it would be nice if they know which financial institutions in their exact countries have access to their funds. Because I can shock you. I'm from Nigeria. Please, those from Nigeria, has FCMB said anything around funding for women? No. These banks, these financial institutions won't do this. I, now, I'm, I'm saying this because, you see, the idea is if there's funding for women, then these women should be able to access it properly. Properly. Yes. yes. Now, I'm thinking, and I'm, ask, and I'm asking, mm -hmm. at Co-op here, we have women from all African countries. Mm -hmm. Can we have an access to know which financial institution in which African country is being funded by the African Development Bank for this purpose. So, so the women can be properly directed on where to channel their energies to. Okay. I think, again, that's the wrong approach. 
And I say it's the wrong approach. Why? Because we're in the business of, as I said earlier, making money. Yes? The financial institutions, they're very easy, if you will, to pinpoint. Very often, how many of you know that FCMB has a program called SHE? Thank you. How many of you know that Access Bank has a program called W? Thank you. All these programs are supported by a FAWA. So to say, right, that we should tell women where to go, every single financial institution who has made it and taken it upon itself to support women will create a program, right? Now, as women entrepreneurs, it's important also to dig and to get the information. That's number one. Number two, on the African Development Bank website, there will be all over there. Like there is a whole of our page that's there. But it's important that we all play the role that we're supposed to be playing. And let me give you a very particular example. By the way, I've been in this business for over 13 years of access to finance for women entrepreneurs, fighting so that women would have access. I've walked into financial institutions where at the beginning, their portfolio of women entrepreneurs were six. Like you could count one, two, three, four, five, six women had actually accessed financing. But they didn't understand, they didn't know. The one thing though that was clear is that women were not coming to the bank. And so, you actually had to create the program. You had to speak to the women. You had to give them the trust. Of course, cultural, uh, if you will, sensitivities play also a role. And this is why financial institutions also create and customize the program that they put in place. In some countries, they actually created very specific branches for women just so that women could go. You see what I mean? But it's important that we each play the role that we're supposed to play. The African Development Bank, and that was the example that I was coming to, came in and said, we're here to support women. Go to Cameroon, Echo Bank, we have it there. Go here, go there. The women came and said, African Development Bank said that they put the money here. It's ours. It's for us. Echo Bank lent to the women. The women did not repay. No, but I think that's the problem of the bank and not the women. Because no, no, no. For Ecobank to lend, they should have gone through several processes to lend to the women. To Precisely that my point. So the goal here is not to tell women the money is there for you. The goal and the point here is for us as women to rise and to see, go to the bank. Financial institutions will not say no to any profitable business. But we have to be willing to do the work. Sorry, I, I, it's been such a long time that we've been in this business, right? We keep saying the same thing over and over. And I've come to the point where I'm, the money is here. Financial institutions are telling us, look, where are the women? We have lines and the lines sit there and they're not utilized they're not utilized. So I think everybody now has to play the role that we're each expected to play. Getting a loan is not because the African Development Bank said, EcoBank, go lend. It has to make sense. We have to fill out all the paperwork. We have to, as entrepreneurs, need to, we need to understand what our risks risk are. When the financial institutions ask you, what will cause you not to be able to pay the money? Are you able to say? If you're not able to say, why would they lend you the money? We have to do the work. Okay. Thank you, Mariam. Okay, let's make a little progress. Um, you spoke about you working with the financial institutions to ensure that um, they um, reduce or make the terms for those um, funds quite um, easy, not not easy, but ensuring that women can really access it, right? Yep. 
Okay, so if a woman approaches um, whatever institution that Afewa is um, working with, even though they don't know, the, the demands from the bank will be different from what the banks will normally demand of other people. Confirmed. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now capacity building. Um, how do these women get this capacity building? Is it directly through Afewa or through those partnership banks? It's through the bank. Through the banks. Everything is done through your financial institution. All right? right? The capacity building. Why is it? The capacity building is done through the financial institution. Why? It's to address the reasons why when there is collateral, right, you're still not able to access. So the issue is not only interest rate. The issue is not only the lack of guarantee. Very often, the problem starts before that. Right? It starts with how, as a woman entrepreneur, you, you have kept your financials, right? What kind of movements have we seen in your account as bankers that we can make a decision to lend or not to lend? You wait until the day that you need a loan, and then you come and ask for the money. We have no data, no history whatsoever. We ask for paperwork. And it's like we're speaking Chinese. So how do we lend? Therefore, the technical assistance that has been put in place is to actually enhance the capacity of the women entrepreneurs to understand that. This is why I said your financial institution becomes your partner in your growth and in your ability to scale up. Thank you very much. Please come put our hands together for her. So I'll be throwing the floor open now for questions, um, three questions specifically. And if you've asked a question before, I would ask that the mic does not go to you this time around. So other people can have an opportunity to ask a question. So the protocol department, please help me. Take the microphone. So I'll take one from this side. Oh, the microphone is with us. <laughs> so you take one from here, right? One from, one from the middle, are you hearing me, protocol? One from the left, one from the middle, and one from that side, please. Then when we're done with the questions, we'll ask her to respond. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kempia Katkuk, and I'd like to ask a question on some of the requirements um, for accessing some of these um, funding for SMEs. Thank you. The middle, one person in the middle. Good afternoon, I'm Ladi Ibrahim Thomas. I'm the director of programs at Muhiba Foundation, founded by Her Excellency, uh, Dr. Aisha Tubala Mohammed in Bauchi State. And also, I'm the provost of uh, Al Muhiba Institute of ICT and Entrepreneurship. I'm going to ask based on the foundation as well as the entrepreneurship. Yes, you have told us uh, a lot of things on how you want to, uh, how women you want them to grow in business. Uh, I will. I would like to know. You did a mapping of uh, women in Africa, and what level of women are you looking at? if you are t talking about entrepreneurs. Because in Africa, the number of women who are not in the formal sector, it's more than the women in the formal sector. Mm -hmm. So who exactly is your bank targeting? Mm -hmm. And that way. Thank you. Good morning, or good afternoon, if I may say. My name is Angelique Ondoa. I'm from Cameroon. So you mentioned one of the institutional bank mm -hmm. that I know and that I work with, mm -hmm. EcoBank. Mm -hmm. I want to know, do you have tools that permit you to monitor that effectively those institutions provide the funds, provide what you, you put as money for the youth, for the entrepreneurs to be able to take, to carry on with their activities. And if yes, 
do you also actually have people from the Afawa who go right to the end, that is to the end, to the, to, to the root, to the women who have to benefit of, of that funding to effectively find out that they have received that money and they have been able to carry on with their projects. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Mom, you can go up and answer. I think it's fine. Okay, so um, the lady who asked for the requirement for asking the funds or accessing the funds, can you stand for a second, please? Who are you banking with? With we you bank with Guarantee Trust Bank and Guarantee and, Trust Bank and Zenit Bank. Okay, so Guarantee Trust Bank is known to have actually, uh, it's not an of our client, but they're known to have a fairly wide SME, uh, if you will, program. So usually what happens is once you are ready, as in for a loan, right, they will evaluate your company, right? Ideally, you have a business plan where you can show them what your vision is in the long run. Exactly. You have all your financials in place. And once you have your financials in place, then they can decide based on the amount that you're asking for what you need to put in place. You see, there is no like one size fits all, actually, to be told, to be, to be frank. In financing, there is no one size fits all. You're seen on an individual basis based on the business that you run, the revenues that it brings, the turnover, the risk that it presents, and this is how the decision is made. Everything that's about interest rate, collateral, and all that kind of stuff comes after they have done that assessment. So in order to answer that question, I would say go back to your financial institution. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, Mapping of the women, who are the women that we're targeting? So as I said, our target market is women-owned SMEs, and we have a very specific definition for that, and I will tell you why we're focusing on women SMEs. Research has shown us that if the continent is going to create the kinds of formal jobs that we need, it is going to be created by women-owned SMEs. Right? And women-owned SMEs for us are SMEs that have a minimum of five employees. If you have less than that, then AFAWA is not for you. There are other programs that are out there, both by the African Development Bank as well as other MDBs uh, that cater to that. But for the purposes of AFAWA, we're looking at women-owned SMEs. And in order for us to move forward and figure out what kind of financial program or product we needed to put in place, we did actually conduct a baseline exercise of 16. We targeted the 16 largest markets um, on the continent, of which Nigeria is one. And you are absolutely right. The majority of women are in the informal sector, which is a problem. It's a problem. We need women entrepreneurs to come out of the informal sector if it's gonna work. The majority of the programs that are put out there are for the formal sector. That's just the reality of it. And I think it's, it's time for us to accept it, right? That's the reality. Uh, the people who invest in us at the African Development Bank expect a return, just like we expect a return. They're not going to take a risk on something and someone that is informal because there is no traceability. There is no data, right? So because of that, we are actually now putting programs to help women transition from the informal to the formal sector. In many different ways, it's customized from country to country, but it is critical that we address that issue if we're going to address the issue of access to finance. However, Lowest hanging fruit are women-owned SMEs. And when we did um, the research, the results showed us that out of 12 million women entrepreneurs, only 450,000 today have the capacity to access the loans that we're talking about. That, th these are now like the realities that we're faced with. 
right? Hence the push and the drive to ensure that women are, are, are coming out of the informal sector. And then Angelique in Cameroon, yes, we monitor heavily. Um, as I said, we're expected to unlock $5 billion worth of access to credit. That $5 billion worth of access to credit has to equate to 18,000 women entrepreneurs having access finance. I have to be able to count them. It's as simple as that. Every financial institution that we work with has indicators that they have to abide by. It's number, it's volume. We even go as far as checking what is the level of non-payment because we came in and told financial institutions you should lend to women. They're profitable, they're less risky. So in order for me to be able to stand there and say that is because I believe that the repayment rate will be higher for women at commercial level than it'll be for other segments, right? So because of that, we measure, but we don't stop there. We meet women entrepreneurs all the time. And in the way in which we ask them questions, we know whether what we have put in place is working or not working, and they don't have to know that it's a FAWA. So question, uh, example again, this week, I met a woman entrepreneur and I said, okay, so you got a funding from Finel, what was different? And she said, they supported me, they helped me in building the loan file, but to my amazement, they didn't ask me to put a title in, in, in guarantee. Of course, for me, that's great news because it means that Finel is using my guaranteeing mechanism. That's how we know. And so these things are things that at the African Development Bank, we're adamant about doing because for us, it's now time to reduce the gap. We want to see, uh, you know, in, in numbers, exactly by how much we have reduced the gap. And our donors are expecting the same, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, another round of applause. We have come to the end of this session, but she's still around. She's seated somewhere there. So if you have a um, personal question, you can ask you, right? Absolutely. Okay, if you have personal questions, you can meet her. She will also guide you. But at Co-op, we will also do our assignment and try and help you know the banks that you should go to. Um, but some banks have been dropped here. If you were smart, you would, have cut, you would have cut like three or four of them already. So please put your things together, have the capacity, approach these banks and take advantage of the $500 million. Wow, that's a lot. No, annually, the one you gave last year. So what are you planning to give this year? Let me go that way. We want to reach $1 billion this year. Oh, they want to do $1 billion this year. That's a lot of money. Thank you very much. And I'll hand over the session to the next person. Cameraman, please come for the official photographs. IJ, please, over to you.